Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video, I'd like to finish up our uh, spur gear design assignment and uh, show you what happens when we put our gears together and uh, some of the things you might want to do uh, to help with your design and maybe embellish your design too. So I took my spur gear, my pinning gear actually, and I uh, kind of embellished that a little bit. Put some ribs in there, uh, put a cavity inside of that, kind of uh, sculpted it out a little bit. Put in a handle so we can actually turn it around. And you're welcome to do something very similar. And that's uh, kind of what it looks like in the back. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start mating this. And of course, uh, when you have an, an element like this into uh, into your assembly, you can go ahead and rotate that by going up, oop, going up to your command manager and uh, picking uh, to rotate uh, component as part of your uh, command manager. Okay, enough said. Let's go ahead and mate these. If you have temporary accesses on, you're welcome to do it that way too. I like to have those on. So let's go to temporary accesses. Let's click on one of the accesses that defines uh, the center of our uh, gear. Click on an axis, go to mate, and put those together. Let's go to green check mark and move this back a little bit. I'm going to click on this surface and that surface, go to mate. Now let's put a distance mate on that, maybe um, 0.05 inches. How about 0.1 inches? And we're going to do the same thing with our gear wheel. Gear wheel. So green check mark there, got plenty of room. Insert component, let's get in our gear wheel in there. So I have a couple different uh, documents open. Let's go ahead and open up our gear wheel. Do the same thing. This time we can click on that surface here and that surface and make those together. Green check mark, see if we can move that back a little bit. Click on the surface, that surface. Let's go to distance. This time we use our uh, mouse shortcuts. And we'll type in uh, point 0.1 just like we did before. The nice thing about the mouse shortcuts is you don't have to migrate to do a whole lot of mouse travel. If you do this all day long, uh, a few seconds saved here and there, in regard to mouse travel, it might add up to minutes, an hour, or maybe hours uh, a week. So it's definitely a time saver. Okay, there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my sketches right now just to uh, make it look a little bit more uh, visible. So let's turn off our sketches. And for some reason, there's some transparency with our uh, gear wheel. Let's go ahead and rebuild this. Huh, what do I turn out that way? Well, let's take a look at it. See if we can solve this. So it's transparent here, too. Uh, is there a circular pattern? Oh, there it is. Looks like transparency was turned on there. Let's turn that back off, and uh, now we're right as rain. So we're going to do something very similar in the assembly. Everybody's got the ability, when you pull this out, it's called your display pane. You have the ability to hide elements, to uh, d determine a display mode of each one of these features that you see down here. You can color those uh, components. You have a master color up here, but you can color each one of these uh, different uh, components down here, too, a different color if you like. And just for the sake of demonstration, let's go ahead and make that red. Uh, what you have uh, here is a hierarchy where the features, uh, the colors of the features, have a higher level on the hierarchy than uh, the master document up here. But well, we're going to go ahead and remove that. And uh, of course, over here on the, on the other side is uh, transparency. You can assign transparency to each one of these features. So, enough said there. Let's go ahead and bring it over here. And while we're here, let's go ahead and assign some uh, appearance colors over here too. You notice that we do have a um, uh, we do have a, these little triangles here. And if we click on that triangle, if we want to change the background color of our base feature, we could do that. I think I make it made a dark gray the last time. So let's go ahead and emulate that. And this also has a certain hierarchy here too. Uh, the triangle on the bottom is uh, is the color of the part. The triangle on the top is a color you're going to assign in the assembly. So these two other uh, uh, gears that we have, the pinning gear and the gear wheel, are the same color, but we can assign a different color to it in the assembly. So let's make our uh, gear, our pinning gear, let's make that blue. And do the same thing over here, let's make our gear wheel kind of a light red color. And green check mark. So now it uh, shows up pretty well with that dark background. I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, one thing you want to keep a note or keep a, in mind: I have my base feature here, 
and the only thing uh, with that base feature that everything else is your design you want to make sure that the center to center distance on this is correct mine should be 1.3125 and I'm going to go ahead and stick with that if yours doesn't quite work and this is one of the indications and it's one of the things you're going to be graded on it's one third of your grade in regard to this assignment that you need to be able to get motion physical through physical dynamics on your gear but some gear uh, ratios, some gear uh, sets are a little bit tight and you might have to increase this a little bit, just increase that distance a little bit and if you have to, make sure you do it by about a thousandth of a unit and only a couple thousandths of a unit at that so that just indicates to me whether you built the gear correctly, the gear set correctly. If you have any problems with that, make sure you give me a call. Okay, let's go to physical dynamics. This is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to make sure your gear teeth are uh, clear of each other. Go to the move components. First thing you want to do is go to collision detection. It's going to automatically kind of fail if we start moving it. It's going to give us a, an audible indication that it is. But all the physical indication too is going to be that blue surface that you see. It looks like I'm free and clear of that right now, so let's go down to physical dynamics. And it's already colliding, so go back to physical or collision detection. Try to get right there in the middle, go back to physical dynamics. And there we go, now we have motion. That's what we're looking for, that's what you're looking for when you put your gears uh, together in your assignment. You need to make sure you do have that physical dynamics and you do have the motion that results from that okay that's pretty much all i wanted to show you uh thank you for joining me and join me for some other videos